Hi everyone. In this video, I am going to explain about solid state voltmeter and a differential voltmeter. What do you mean by solid state voltmeter and what is the difference between the voltmeter what we have seen conventional DC voltmeter or multi range voltmeter and this solid state voltmeter. Solid state voltmeter and the main purpose of this solid state voltmeter is to improve the gain of the measurement improve the gain of the measurement so in order to improve the gain of measurement this voltmeter uses operational amplifier this voltmeter uses operational amplifier operational amplifier is a high gain differential amplifier that improves the gain of incoming signal it calculates the difference between the incoming signals and improves the gain okay that's why op amp is used Coming to the circuit diagram, how the circuit is constructed to improve the gain of the measurement. See, entire circuit is divided into two sections. One is voltage divider section, voltage divider section, and this is the voltage divider section, followed by operational amplifier section. Okay, if you observe the multi range series type voltmeter. There are cascaded connection of multiplier resistors and again in series with the meter. Here also the voltage divided network represents the same and similar structure if you observe properly. Okay, see this is the 100 volt range, it is 10 volt range, this is 1 volt, 100 volts, 100 millivolts and 10 millivolts. That means each and every voltage is a multiplication of the previous one. 10 into 10, 100 millivolts into 10, 1 volt, 1000 millivolts, nothing but 1 volt into 10, 10 volts into 10, 100 volts. And as the voltage increases, then multiplier register value also increases in the same order like multiples of 10. Okay, so here it is 820 into 10. 8.2 kilo ohms again 8.2 kilo ohms into 10 82 again 82 into 10 820 into 10 8.2 mega so like this we have taken the voltage divider network which is a multiple of 10 now coming to the operational amplifier diagram we should know the ic741 ic741 pin configuration uh, I will tell in brief because we are not uh, much going into the operational amplifier that comes into a different subject. Okay, so first we will see two and three pins are input pins. Two and three pins are input pins, whereas two is inverting input and three is non inverting input. Three is non inverting input and 1 and 5 are offset null 1 and 5 are offset null pins what do you mean by offset null pin when there is no input the output should be 0 so that adjustment can be done by this 1 and 5 pins ok I will tell when we go into this circuit diagram 4 and 7 are 4 and 7 are plus or minus VCC pins so 4 is minus VCC and 7 is plus VCC and whereas 6 is nothing but output pin where we are taking the output okay so 2 and 3 pins are input pins 2 3 pins are input pins coming to this 1 and 5 1 and 5 between this 1 and 5 1 potentiometer is connected that potentiometer varies from minimum 1 to maximum here 5 between these two ranges what is the purpose of this 1 and 5 pins which is connected to potentiometer? The purpose of this potentiometer is, is to keep the output voltage is equal to 0 when there is no input. When there is no input applied. Okay, suppose if at all any error occurred in the output signal where random value is coming in the output when there is no input, that should be adjusted to 0 by this potentiometer. That is the purpose of this 1 and 5 pins. Okay, that is the meaning of offset null. Now coming to this R2 resistor which is connected in feedback position. R2 is a feedback resistor connected from output to input 2. Input to this inverting point. 
okay and this capacitance c this capacitance is having 0.1 microfarad the purpose of c capacitor is to prevent the stray capacitance effect to prevent the stray capacitance effect so what do you mean by stray capacitance effect stray capacitance is nothing but because of human touches because of human touches yet on yet any point of the circuit some stray capacitance effect is there that can be avoided by using this 0 point 0 0.1 microfarad which is connected in feedback connection okay and now is it inverting or non-inverting operational amplifier is it inverting or non-inverting operational amplifier or we can say that depending upon the input where we are connecting the source input to which pin we are connecting the source input is it at the 2 or 3 3 the source input is connected at 3 that means 3 is a positive terminal so it is non-inverting operational amplifier wherever we are connecting the input that decides whether it is inverting or non-inverting as the input is connected to non-inverting terminal it comes under non-inverting operational amplifier what is the gain of non-inverting operational amplifier gain of the non-inverting operational amplifier is 1 plus r2 by r1 so 1 plus r2 by r1 that is equal to 1 plus what is r2 in your circuit 100 kilo by what is r1 1 kilo so what is the gain of this circuit 101 so gain is equal to 101 now let us see if r2 increases what happens suppose instead of 100 kilo ohms i have taken r2 as 200 kilo ohms what happens then a becomes 201 if it is 500 a becomes 501 that means as r2 increases the gain increases as r2 increases the gain increases so the importance of r2 is to improve the gain of operational amplifier okay another important thing is the purpose of r4 see here r4 is a variable resistor which is connected just in front of the meter here r4 is adjusted to get the maximum deflection to get the maximum deflection in the meter okay r4 is adjusted to get the maximum when we are performing an experiment to get the maximum deflection r4 is going to be adjusted okay so these are the this is the purpose of individual values now coming to the diodes which are connected in back to back fashion let us name this diode as d1 and this diode as d2 what is the purpose of these two diodes connected exactly at the input of this operational amplifier diodes d1 and d2 are diodes d1 and d2 are known as protecting diodes diodes d1 and d2 are known as protecting diodes Wh whom we are protecting operational amplifier okay so one diode is in forward bias condition and one by a diode is in reverse bias condition that means when negative voltage occurred here the diode d1 is in on state at that negative voltage goes to ground through this d1 suppose if high positive voltage like a 1 volt or 2 volt or maximum of this voltage occurred at this point then what happens the diode d2 comes into on state and that voltage will be grounded to this d2 that means what is the maximum voltage that should be appeared at the input of this one what is the voltage here 10 millivolts 10 millivolts is the maximum input voltage that is appeared at the input of this operational amplifier network so 10 millivolts 10 millivolts because of this 10 millivolts either of the diodes is in on is in on state neither of the diodes is in on state so d1 is in off state d2 also is in off state when the input is 10 millivolts then that 10 millivolts directly goes into the operational amplifier and then into the emitter okay here you may have a doubt that when we are applying 100 millivolt 100 volts range suppose sir i am keeping the voltage range as 100 volts then what, what is the status of diode same diodes both diodes are in off state because 100 volts when passing through these many when passing through these many resistors each and every resistor is having some voltage drop after passing through these voltage drops definitely the voltage appeared at this point is 10 millivolts only is 10 millivolts only whether whether it is 100 volts or 10 volts or 1 volt the 
voltage is 10 millivolts but current is different 100 volts is having a different current 10 milli 10 volts is having a different current and 10 millivolts is having a different current depending upon the current the circuit is operated but depending on the voltage the output voltage for all the circuits for all the ranges the voltage appeared across this point is same that is 10 millivolts so that the both the diodes are in off state operational amplifier is there if either extreme ends like negative voltage or more than the cutting voltage occurred the diode comes into on state and it protects the operational amplifier okay so this is the solid state voltmeter <laughs> so this just a description is given for your reference two sections are there voltage divided section and operational amplifier section as i said diodes are used to protect the operational amplifier and the feedback resistor is high value to increase the gain in this case the gain is 101 the offset null pins are connected to the potentiometer which are used to get the zero output in no input condition <coughs> and r4 is adjusted to get the maximum deflection in the meter now coming to the second concept called differential voltmeter what do you mean by differential voltmeter it is a different type of voltmeter compared to the previous uh, rather than previous what we have seen like a normal conventional voltmeters and multi range voltmeters and solid state voltmeters these are different topics and this is uh, this differential voltmeter is a different topic it calculates the difference between known and unknown voltage in the case of differential voltmeter we are taking two voltages one is known voltage another one is unknown voltage these two are always compared to each other whenever these two voltages are equal there exists a current flow that is zero let us see the circuit diagram then you can understand in a better way see this is the unknown voltage which you want to calculate that is connected on the left side of this ammeter this is ammeter okay and this reference voltage let it be one volt which is connected across the potentiometer <coughs> now the output of the potentiometer is given to the other side of the ammeter that means the out current coming from the potentiometer goes into the ammeter like this and the current coming from this unknown voltage source that is coming like this when the voltage at this point is equal to voltage at this point then the current flowing through the meter is zero because both are having same voltages both currents are same and flowing in the opposite direction so gets cancelled so a meter shows zero deflection nothing but null indicator <coughs> okay let us do this uh, with a simple example consider one volt as a reference supply that means the complete potentiometer is having a voltage 1 volt and assume unknown voltage is actually unknown to us assume unknown voltage let it be 0 0.5 volts listen carefully very simple 0 0.5 volts so when it is 0 0.5 volts unknown voltage is fixed always and the potentiometer initially it is connected at this point at the starting point at the starting point what is the voltage 1 volt because it is directly connected to the positive supply okay so 1 volt that means on this right side we are having 1 volt and on this left hand side we are having this 0 0.5 is there any voltage difference yes 0 0.5 volts is the voltage difference between them when there is a voltage difference between these two definitely some current flows through the ammeter okay now what you have to do slowly vary this potentiometer towards down when it exactly reaches half of the potentiometer means what is the voltage across this half of the potentiometer 0 0.5 and similarly what is the voltage on the unknown side it is also 0 0.5 so on either sides of this ammeter we have we are having 0 0.5 volts as the voltage so <coughs> so what is the voltage what is the current flowing through the meter it is simply 0 because on either sides of ammeter we are having same voltage same current flow they gets cancelled and ammeter shows zero deflection so whenever there is a null deflection in the ammeter simply it is evident that the known the voltage across the potentiometer is equal to the unknown voltage 
that means every time we are comparing the unknown voltage with the known voltage and finding the current if the current is zero then we have to assume that the unknown voltage is equal to the voltage across the potentiometer this is what the differential voltmeter differential voltmeter means it calculates the difference between the unknown and the known voltage <coughs> okay so the differential voltmeter finds the difference between the unknown and known voltage an ammeter is used in the circuit to indicate the null deflection when both known and unknown voltages are equal the current flowing through the meter is zero so during the experiment the potentiometer is adjusted to null deflection okay thank you